like to find out if the person who this summer asked me for reading material is in the room. Okay, it was uh, it was uh, a piece from uh, about high speed photography in general, and uh, so I told her where it was. And what what what's your name? Liz. Liz, did you ask me about reading material over the summer? Yes. Um, and I and I directed you to a link, right? Yes. Um, so, yeah, it doesn't matter. All I want to say is I want to give you all the opportunity to also get what she got. And uh, it, it's sort of related to uh, what we're doing, except it's more directed towards kind of a, a general approach and, and more, more to uh, industrial application and stuff like that. But uh, I think it's a, it's a pretty good overview of what high-speed photography is about. And, uh, but getting back to this, so I'll send you an email about that, but getting back to it today. So I think we left off with uh, an introduction or a statement saying that an intervalometer would be used to have, would be useful to have for time-lapse applications and, uh, and the electronic ones are uh, probably desirable. And I forgot my train of thought, so I'm trying to catch up on it uh, by just looking at the stuff that I have on the table. So. Um, what I'm doing with this. What I am uh, doing with it, it's a, it's, it, it is sort of a, I want to make an analogy, but uh, I just got a sailboat. That has nothing to do with, with anything, except for the fact that somebody told me that if you get a sailboat, in that case, you're kind of committed to working on the sailboat. And it's, they go together. And uh, time lapse is sort of the same thing. That uh, you're working with equipment. You're, you're essentially immersed in the equipment that you, that you have or that you make. And uh, so when you say, okay, well, I want to overcome this, you know, what do I do? Well, you, you can make yourself something like this, whatever that is. But you might see in there, there's a little red light that comes on every so often. Uh, now it's making a light out of it. Oh, there it was. Well, let's see. I think we can make it happen faster. Maybe it can't be. Yeah. yeah, you work with technology, you die with it. What's this one? All right. So you can say, well, every time one of those red lights flashes, you also hear a clicking sound. Well, that clicking sound is the closing of a switch. And the camera, this camera, will not work uh, just by closing a switch. Like a flash would, you know, you take a switch and you fire a flash. This won't do it. So what this needs is to have a mechanical, it has a, a lever down here. You push forward, and it exposes a frame. Push forward and expose the frame. Push forward, expose the frame. So, how do we make that uh, camera make a photograph every so often, every time that that light turns on? Well, this is sort of a mechanical solution. This is a mechanical camera. It doesn't have any electronics. So uh, there's the camera body. There's a lever here. And this has to move forward in order for the uh, camera to expose one frame. What it does, it makes that the shutter wheel go around once. And it stops until you do it again. So for this, uh, you can start out with a, a disc on it. You put a, let's look at it sideways. You put a rod like that or a screw in it. This is called an eccentric. I've been called eccentric, but 
this is an extension. As you get up center here, and this rotates, and this is off the center. Now you, you connect this with a cable or whatever to that. But you don't actually want to connect it because directly with something that is rigid. Because uh, when you pull on this, it, it's possible that you just wreck your camera. So what you do instead is in here you put a spring. And you connect it over to there. You set this up so that the distance from the center to here is such that when this is on this side, it pulls on that cable. And that advances or pulls on that lever. And that would make an exposure. And then it has to, and it comes all the way around here, and then it relaxes, right? And then it goes around again and makes another picture. So all you need to do now, this is a motor, this is a motor, and you get power. And every time it goes around, it makes a picture. Well, that's pretty good. You could you could control the, the, the rate or the time between pictures by how fast the motor turns. This is a way in which some people do it. Uh, typically, when you would do that, uh, you would have you would install someplace on the shaft of that motor uh, a disc with slots in it, and then electronics might count the number of uh, slots that go by, or the number of impulses that the engine the motor gets. And it would be it would be driven by something called a Stepper motor. So those are motors that, that you give them a little jolt and they, they advance a little bit. You give them another jolt, they advance a little bit. They're not continuous. Uh, but they're very high in terms of pulling power. And, and that's what you need in this case. So, but you could just go this way. You say, well, let's make a What you want is as this thing goes around. You'd like it to stop there every time that it goes around. So for this, you could, uh, or, or the solution is, uh, one solution is, uh, to insert in the system uh, a switch. Yeah. Switch. In such a manner. This could go to, let's say, uh, the power goes in here, and another line goes in here, and this goes to a battery. So what happens? We have a battery here. Electricity from here goes to here, to here, to here, to here. It goes right to the motor, right? And the other end comes from here, and the motor is on all the time. It just spins around. We don't want that. The way to to stop the motor is on the eccentric to put like a, a little hill. And when that when you do that, then whenever the hill is here, this is higher. And it disconnects. Right? So at this point nothing happens. Electricity can't get to the motor. Right? So now you uh, take this wire here, you jump it, you take this one, and you jump it, and you put a switch here. And the switch, let's say, is open, because it's not touching. So electricity can't do anything again. However, if you connect from here to here, now it can go from here, uh, and it can go from here, oh yeah, to here, Here and through here and through here goes to the motor, and the other side goes to the motor directly, right? This is disconnected at this point. But the minute that this gets connected, electricity can get to the motor. What does the motor do? Well, it starts to turn. It starts to turn. And then what happens? Well, this little bulge here moves over to here. And what does happen? What happens to this? Well, it moves down 
Close as is, right? And at this point, you can open that. It makes no difference. So this is closed. This goes all the way around, and it gets to here. And when it gets here, the little hill is there. This opens up, right? And the motor stops. Uh, this will be called, I think it's called a cam, wouldn't it? Isn't it one of the names for something like this? A cam. And um, so this little scheme allows you to use a switch for a short time just to get things going. And then the camera makes the shot. And that's what is set up on here. So we can use this electronic timer that closes the switch every so often to uh, activate the motor every so often. It all, all goes well. So now you set the camera up and uh, uh, you aim it at some subject and and you photograph it over time. Now you, there are some concerns about about lighting and about aperture or, or exposure. Okay? Uh, whether it's digital or whether it is uh, uh, film, it doesn't matter. Uh, maybe see there are movie cameras that have automatic exposure on them too. You know, they, they will open the lens or they will change it all the time. Uh, digital cameras do too. In fact, the one that I set up, I uh, put a program on. And I didn't think about that. Uh, but at night time, right, the lens will go wide open. Now what happens after that? The exposure time gets as long as the camera can deliver, right? So at night time, it's, it's exposing for its maximum time, which is 30 seconds. In the daytime, it's running at 100 kiloseconds. And uh, it's also adjusting the shop aperture in the daytime to a smaller aperture. Right? So uh, in film cameras, you also have to worry about that. Well, how do I make sure that the exposure stays constant? Well, one of the, one of the ways is to keep the lighting constant. Sometimes that's a problem. Sometimes you want to uh, uh, photograph a subject that needs to have light change like, the, like daylight change. In that case, uh, you, you can use artificial lighting. For example, this camera uh, could fire a flash every time it makes uh, So then you use flash to make the photograph, but, but daylight is on and somehow you eliminate daylight. I, uh, I shouldn't say I don't know how. It, it becomes a complicated process. Uh, there is a, uh, which reminds me of another kind of uh, expert time-lapse photographer, and some of you by might know. at the Cornell uh, Agricultural Station or something. Joe Graden, or did. Uh, I'm not sure whether it was him or whether it was the, uh, the uh, Agricultural Station. Had an interest in photographing the ripening or, or the growth of an apple on a tree. Well, uh, there are some problems with become apparent pretty soon when you say, well, yeah, I want to photograph the apple, but I want to photograph it day and night with steady lighting, but the apple needs to get sunlight in order to do whatever the apple would do in a regular situation. You see the, the complications that are on. So here you have this apple, you know, a little apple from the English, you know, thing there. And uh, you can aim a camera at it. And then you try to bother something. Want it to move. And uh, so in order to have consistent lighting, you need to eliminate sunlight. Well, So, what's going to happen here? Well, the, the, the apple was in a box. It's 
it's not getting any sunlight. So you make this box in such a manner that it has a it has a, a, a roll blind or some other door okay, that opens up and lets sunlight in. So the, and over here you have a, a lamp. However it's going to be. So now the camera is going to look at that uh, leaf. And every time, just before the, a picture is made, this roller blind goes down to eliminate any sunlight. Right? And just before the camera turns on, it makes the photograph, the light turns off inside the box. Then the camera makes a shot, you turn off the light, and you open up the box again. All of that has to happen for every shot over a period of a few months right? to see that apple grow on the tree. So there are a whole bunch of things that are in interconnected just to make one picture and then the same picture over again. So, but there are, you know, there are people who need this kind of photography, and uh, somebody needs to provide that service. Maybe, maybe you would. Uh, but you need to be very patient. The time lapse photography takes takes a long time. So anyway, uh, that same electronic controller um, could be used with the 5D. Uh, in that case, uh, the camera has a remote release, you know, cable release, that type thing. Uh, Japan, uh, 275. No, China, 275. Japan, hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. So um, this is, you know, an L cheap of and manual release. So I took it apart, and I found out that it has three contacts in it. And you take a look at this in the circuit; it, it's essentially three leads. And uh, these are these are connected to the camera. And all you do is you push down on this one, and the first thing that this does okay, is connect to that one, and that connects these two together. That causes the camera's autofocus mechanism to focus the lens. And this one has also contact on it. So now, when you push down on this, you're touching here. They're connected together, but to keep going further, and now this one touches there. And that causes the shutter to operate. It turns out that you don't, you know, if you put the lens on manual, this is unimportant. And you can just connect this and this, and the camera fires. Of course, you have to have the, the guts to wreck a five, you know, whatever, five dollar piece of thing. So if you mess up, you lost five bucks, right? It's a big deal. So, but now all you all you need is a switch. Okay. So you take that, connect it to where it's supposed to go, and this in here. Let's see if we can do it. Now, I could do it by holding the cable release and doing it by hand. Now that's doing the switching. Um, or I could have a, a rotating something or another that does the switching. And ingenuity in time lapse photographers is quite something. How you solve a particular problem. Now in the uh, reference that you have, you know, I'm going to undo this. There is a, a, a reference to a, a desire to operate a camera every so often and also have uh, tungsten lighting. If you have flash lighting, you could connect a, a, an electronic flash to the camera. Uh, but if you don't have that, in that case, you're going to have tungsten lighting. And uh, supposing that you, you, know, you have the... Uh, it is a tungsten lit situation. You know, it's 
into the photograph is a, in a flower pot, and there's a little flower going up over here. And then in the camera at the, at the pot. And then over here, uh, you say, well, you know, I want lighting. You say, you put the light in, put a thousand watts over here, right? And uh, now you keep it on. Well, this thing is going to grow, right? It's going to grow a little bit, and then it goes. Well, that might be interesting in itself, right? So, uh, to do a time lapse picture with tungsten lighting, you want to turn it on for a short while and then turn it off. Uh, and then just have ambient, whatever. Well, and then you also have to think about your camera. Uh, this one or that one. It, the tungsten lamp needs a little time to warm up. Okay, you don't want to do it at the very beginning. And you want to wait for it to stabilize, then make the shot. So, for that, uh, the, the scheme would be something like this. Probably could be done different ways. But uh, what I did is I took uh, two of these. Actually, you know, there are two timers in here, but there, there are four in this one. Timer one, timer two, timer three, timer four. So essentially these are uh, switches that turn on for a certain length of time. And you can vary the time. So, I'm going to make this one. The, the intervalometer. That's going to control how much time elapses between photographs. Okay. When it uh, activates, okay, it fires that, and it also fires this. So when it's done timing, Typically, that's, that's how when it's done timing, then it sends out a signal, and these two say, oh, we detect a signal. So at that point, this one turns on, and this is connected to the light. So this is, turns on your lights. This one is a delay. Delay because you want the light to be on, right? So it's not a long delay, maybe a tenth of a second, maybe half a second, but not instantaneous. So, and when this one is done, it tells this one, fire. And this one goes to camera. And when it is done, tells this one to start timing again. Well, it could be either this one or that one. It doesn't matter. Uh, but the sequence of events now would go, I start the time. This time's for a minute. At the end of a minute, my lights turn on. I start to delay the operation of the camera for a little bit. Then this one turns on, and it needs to turn on long enough for the shutter to say, oh, switch closed. So it has to have a little time on it. And when it's done, you start the process all over again. So it's a cascade time thing. Sometimes circuits like this are called multi, uh, stable multi, uh, stable libraries, or stable oscillators. And they do the same thing over and over again. Um, so at the, uh, at the, the building here at RIT, I have one of these. Installed. Although I don't really need it, I could use this one because I'm operating this camera, camera like this, and it's just using daylight, so I don't have to worry about lights or anything. Yeah. So, like logistically speaking, for weather protection from theft and everything, like how do you set up your camera? For yeah, that's a good question or? too. <laughs> that's a very good question. Yeah, I was always uh, well. I don't have a good answer for that. <laughs> Uh, I, I set up a camera outside, and uh, I put a sign on it, you know, please don't disturb. <laughs> and then you rely on people not touching. Uh, but you're right. You know, you leave the camera out in the outdoors, and it could disappear. Right? Uh, yeah, I don't know. You booby trap it. So. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. in case. Uh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
That's a good one. But yeah, there's no, there's no something to worry about. <laughs> anyway, I don't have, I don't have a, a and I kind of resisted the temptation to uh, show you what is on the way because there's so much of it, and it's all very good, better than I could do. So I decided to show you a couple, oh, why are we here? Uh, show you a couple examples of uh, time lapse that I made. And I'll do that in a second. But, and um, the next point about, about the time lapse uh, thing is that the concept is it takes time to make a time lapse production. Our lap time is not long enough if you want to do it justice. So uh, you'll be on your own between now and the end of the quarter to uh, generate a time lapse sequence. Um, I will be here okay, tomorrow evening to help out, to talk, to whatever, but we're not going to make anything. And, uh, but then at the end, well, what is it you're going to make? What I'd like you to consider is to make something as simple as this. What is it? Exactly. How many of you have made them in elementary school? <laughs> I know. Wasn't it fun? I'm asking you to make another one. Okay? Uh, there is value in this. You, you, you wouldn't believe it. Where, where, is the, where do I see the value? At some point or another, you're going to go on a, on a job interview, from, and, and you're going to show your portfolio photographs or your technical reports. Okay? And pretty soon, you're going to run out of things to talk about. But you want to uh, impress something special to, that, to the people that are interviewing you, right? That's when you pick out your clipboard. <laughs> you don't need a computer. Okay. Just hand it, and if it's, if it's disposable, you just give it to them with your name on it. So, of course, you know. I think there's, that is a, a, a positive thing to have, a flipbook of, of, of your own work. Uh, and, uh, and it doesn't have to be elaborate or anything. Okay, so here's a couple of them. And uh, make a flipbook. Now, I'm not asking you to actually do it. If, if you would like to present the uh, time lapse uh, subject that you uh, decide on as a, a digital video presentation, you can do that too. Uh, there are various software programs that, that let you do that. Once you have the, the image files, okay, you put them in a folder. Uh, QuickTime, I think QuickTime Pro, okay, will let you select an image sequence. And when you select that sequence, you say, okay, play it. And then it'll, it'll play your time-lapse movie for you. And then you can save it as a, as a movie. Uh, I don't, I mean, I'm not about instructions on how to use QuickTime. Because there is an alternative, and that is to turn it as a piece of paper. <laughs> uh, but if you were going to go that route, the digital route, uh, that's a possibility too. Uh, of course, in an interview setting, it becomes a little more complex. Uh, so I, I believe in those little handout flipbooks. One thing that I would ask you to consider is to, is, to, is to try to make them well. And in order for a flipbook to work, the frames need to register quite well from image to image. And um, all it takes is some extra care. You, know, you have your images, uh, and you don't want to print them too big. Okay, that's, that doesn't work so good. So they can be fairly small, you know, like those. Two inches by three inches, maybe, and then you leave yourself a little border. So this is the image, and you get a little extra border over here. This is where you might put a staple. Now, in order to 
uh, register, what, you could print a, a gazillion of these and some, some of them on an 8 half 11 sheet of paper, okay? So you have maybe 30 of them on a sheet, or maybe just 10. Uh, but then you have multiple sheets. The thing to do is to cut them all so that one edge is cut very well. And the other one is also cut very well. That means that when you stack them, then you can tap them down and tap on that edge, right? And you bring them all there. And you tap on that edge, and they'll be in registration. If you if you don't do that, in that case, it's they will just jump around as, as you flip uh, do the flip book. And then you then you staple them up. And if you don't staple them, you can use one of those. Uh, I know, sir, there are these clamp, larger clamps. You can clamp them up. Um, but registration uh, kind of separates the uh, experts from the novices. Uh, and what it is that you photograph, uh, that'll be up to you. Oh, and then uh, I wanted to show you uh, my sample. My sample uh, time-lapse movies. So as this thing warms up, do you have any questions now? So Mr. Deputy, yeah. your Question. phone is about to die, so I don't know if that'll corrupt the file if it dies while recording. No, it won't. Okay. I don't think it will. Oh, it's still got 10%. <laughs> but thanks for the warning. I also have on here the uh, electronic flash presentation, the, the, uh, the PowerPoint. And I think somebody wanted a copy of it. Well, if you want it, I have it. If you have media to put it on, I uh, can have it. Yeah. <laughs> the Weather Channel or the Weather, you know, they have time lapse all the time. You, you see these all the time. Yeah. It's no longer a novelty. It used to be. Um, but how long was that? Like from the, the actual time period? Real time. Uh, that I think was uh, maybe an hour. Oh, okay. It wasn't that long. And uh, I must admit, I did that with this timer. Uh, but I also did another one before this, and I, but I don't have a copy of it. Where I actually I did it by hand. I fired the camera like every five seconds. Oh wow! <laughs> but I didn't do it for an hour. Uh, I only did it for like ten minutes, fifteen minutes. Uh, and uh, I don't know if I have another one. Uh, the reason I don't have, a, if I don't have another one, the reason I don't have one is because uh, I guess I put a new operating system on it or something, and the QuickTime uh, changed to QuickTime Basic as a player instead of QuickTime Pro, and yeah. it doesn't have the uh, ability to select an image sequence and then show it as a movie. Uh, so, you know, I guess I need to spend 30 bucks unless one of you has it. <laughs> <copies. laughs> Just kidding. Uh, and so, there, these are a time lapse of a, a plant, a corn 
plant make a suit and all that. And a whole bunch of them. Uh, but that won't work now. And the sprouting, I want to get some. Looked at? Yeah. Uh, no, it's just a sequence too. Well, I don't have the, the plan. Uh, that one was actually much shorter than the, than the sunset one, uh, but it was uh, three seeds of corn starting to sprout, and uh, that took that took almost uh, a week, and they hardly moved. Yeah. So it was not very exciting. Uh, but anyway, you saw a sample of pine So I'm not asking you to do anything more than that. Uh, I mean, I'm not asking you. I'm suggesting, you know, you don't need to go to extremes. But relive your elementary school experience. And, and then send a copy to your teacher. And look what we did in college. <laughs> All right? OK. So uh, I'll see you. I'll be here on uh, tomorrow for those who want to talk to me. Otherwise, I'll see you next week. Have you ever seen the website called Chinese Stars? I think it's not working. It might be .com.